Hi everyone, welcome to my channel, Go So Beautiful. My name's Becky, and today I have an episode of Friday Sews. Friday Sews was started by Jen from Today in Jen's Sewing Room as a way to create a community of sewists and vloggers to have a way to connect. So if you haven't checked out Jen from Today and Jen's Sewing Room, check her out. Also, you can check out the hashtag Friday Sews and see all the different vloggers that um, participate in this community. And I know you'll find lots of content that um, you'll want to watch. So in Friday Sews, we usually share things about what we've made and what we're working on and also little life updates. So today I have to start with a life update. In my last video, I shared with you all that we were just waiting for my granddaughter to be born. And wouldn't you know, the day I recorded that video, my um, son's fiance went to the hospital and got induced for labor and the baby was born the very next day, which is when my video appeared. So I'm super excited to introduce my granddaughter, Addison Rain. Isn't she precious? And I'm just over the moon and can't wait to go see her. They're um, in another city. And so we're gonna be going to visit and meet my granddaughter for the first time this weekend. So um, in all that excitement, I mean, I had been, I've been sewing on various projects this past week and even planned to do some sewing on those projects today. But as I laid in bed and thought about the things I was going to bring to them that I had already made, I decided, heck with those other sewing plans, I'm gonna make some more stuff for my granddaughter. <laughs> so, um, I'll share what I'm planning to work on today and um, hope to get finished. And if I do, I will um, put some pictures up. And then also I will share what my plans are for next week. So the first thing I want to make is, I think I've shown a picture of it, but it's a sleep sack. And I'll put a picture of it up so you can see what it is, but, and it's a real fancy one, but it's just a real basic pattern that I was free on the internet. I downloaded it and this one's really big, so I'm gonna make it smaller, but um, basically this is the front and this is the back. And you cut this on the fold and then in the front, you put a zipper down the center and then you can button the shoulder seams or stitch them. And I've seen a lot of these little sleep sacks um, for sale in stores and so forth. And I had a friend who I babysat for that used one for her little boy. So for that sleep sack, I'm going to use this double gauze that I got from Joann's. And it's got Baby Yoda on it. And I forget, my husband just told me what the name of Baby Yoda is. I'll, I'll write it on the screen if I can, but isn't that cute? And my son and his fiance love the Mandalorian. So the next thing I may try to make, definitely am going to try and make um, another pair of leggings with this pattern. This is Simplicity S9390, and it has a little onesie and some overalls and a little jacket and a hat and a pair of leggings. And this goes from size extra, extra small up to a large, which I believe is 18 months. So, um, She's probably going to grow out of her newborn clothes quickly, so I may make these in three to six months, but I've just got some of this 
kind of a pink salmon colored double brushed poly and um, those little leggings whip up really quickly and then if I have time I may make another bodysuit or jacket with this double brushed poly I think those two will go together really nicely so that's on my agenda for today we have to go tomorrow um, for my nephew's graduation and then Saturday we will go on to visit my son so really today is the only day I have to sew um, and of course I have other things I want to make for them I have a baby quilt that is made with fat quarters and um, I do have a question I'm I've not really made too many things. Uh, I've not made a quilt with fat quarters and I'm wondering if you pre-wash them, do you, I usually surge the raw edges when I pre-wash things, but for fat quarters, that's going to be a lot of surging. So I didn't know whether it's, I should do that or not. If I know there's some quilters out there, please let me know how you handle your fat quarters um, when you go to make a quilt in terms of pre-washing. Okay, and then what I worked on this week, I was, I've been pretty busy since last week actually. Um, we are heading to the beach for our family vacation um, next week, which will be June the 4th. And I will, um, I am planning to make a video, but I went ahead and made some shorts because I had gotten mine out from storage and they're just a little bit snug and my pre-vacation lose 10 pounds has not um, worked out so well but that's okay um, so I um, made the Allegro shorts and I know that's backwards from Love Notions um, and this comes this is a great pattern you can make it in shorts pants um, with or without cuffs the la the pants can be made with or without elastic um, at the ankles and then it has a short skirt and a long skirt and I made these last year and um, I really liked the way they came out um, they also have two different lengths for the shorts if you want nine inch or five inch shorts and um, comes in sizes zero to 32. So I made, I had bought some fabric for shorts last last year and did a get around to making them of course. So um, this year I pulled it out and I made these nice, um, this is like a, a cotton twill fabric, um, almost like chinos and um, it's a mint green. I'll try to put a picture of me wearing them, but um, I may not get to do that. And I lined the, um, the waistband with just a, a plain 100% cotton quilting fabric because this, um, this fabric is kind of thick and I thought that might be, make it harder to sew you have to you put the elastic in and then you stitch it down stitch down and um, make a tunnel for <clears throat> a drawstring now I did not do the drawstring I just tied a bow there but um, if you want to do that that I think I'm going to put the drawstring in because they are a little bit loose on me and then I also lined the pockets with the same um, 100 percent cotton fabric so the only thing I'm not crazy about is the pockets on the back of these they do tell you they have a placement line and suggest that you try them on before you sew them on I don't really like the way those look on the back and I don't know that I'll use them that much so I might just remove them but those are nice go-to pattern for shorts that are very comfortable elastic waisted elasticated waist um, 
as soon as I made those, I thought, what kind of about some a top that I might be able to make, and I um, was hoping to make just a little shell, like a sleeveless, slip over your head shell, and I had gotten this fabric last year as a remnant at my cheapo fabric store. Um, fabric World in Stone Mountain, that's what it is. It's not cheapo. Everything's discounted. And I just didn't have quite enough for a back and a front. So I went online. I knew this came from fabric.com and I went online to order, to see if they had it again and they did. So um, I ordered another yard of it and um, I thought it was going to come last week, but it took a little bit longer, so it didn't come until this week, but I've got it. The shell is super easy to make. Um, in the meantime, I did look for patterns to use, and I found, um, is this it? Yes. This, I used the Sorbetto top from Seamwork Patterns. I, um, do I have a picture? I'll put a picture up and this I believe is a free pattern oh here it is the colors not that great but they show it with a pleat down the front and it's got kind of a scoop neck it is sleeveless but it just slips over your head and you do they do give you markings on the pattern to make it without the pleat so I thought I would try this out and um, made it without the pleat using a size 12, I believe I ended up using for the top and graded out to 16. And the first, my first towel, wearable towel, is I used this pink gingham. And this was actually um, a man's shirt that I got from Goodwill, I think, or some other um, thrift store. And I had taken it apart with the intention of making like some other kind of shirt. And I thought, well, this would be perfect for summer. So um, I just use bias binding on the arms and the neckline. And when I tried it on, um, and it does have darts at the side, so there's some good shaping here. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah. Um, it was just a little bit big still, and the, the arm side was big, because um, I, I used a 12 for the neckline and the back, but I cut the 14 arm side, and it was just a little bit too low, and then it, it flared out quite a bit. So I decided to try it again because I hadn't gotten my fabric yet and I really wanted it to fit, you know, pretty close to the body. So um, I found this fabric that I had gotten to make a swimsuit cover up with. And um, this time I just cut a straight 12 for the neckline, front and back, and then a 12 at the arm side, but I did extend it at the side seam to the 14. And then I think I graded out a little bit. Anyway, this fits a little bit better. The only thing I wasn't too crazy about was when I think of a shell, I think of something that's got a little bit higher neckline. And I believe I did raise the neckline on this an inch. But then I also realized I want the shoulders to be a little bit wider. So when I make this in my final fabric, I'll probably extend the shoulder a little bit, maybe raise the neckline a little more, but I still want to be able to get it on and off. So those were kept me pretty busy. And then um, I started, I still hadn't gotten my fabric. So I decided I wanted to try another pair of shorts. And um, I found this pattern from Seamwork. I have a subscription to Seamwork. They have about three different levels. If you get the 
And that the highest level last year was on sale for 50% off. I think I ended up paying about $75 for it. And you get um, access to all their tutorials as well as you can download as many patterns that they have on their website as you want. And they have over 200 patterns. So um, I, I got the subscription and I have several patterns and I haven't actually tried them yet. So I thought, let me try this um, shorts pattern. This is called, these are called the Dorian shorts. And what I like about them is they have slash pockets along with elastic at the sides but they do have a zip fly and button and flat waistband in the front and the back. Here is the line drawing and Seamwork has their patterns sized in um, regular or what they call missy, I think misses, and curvy. And this is one thing that I, um, I did have to adjust because my measurements were close to an 18, but they were also close to, a, they were a little bit shy. The 18 was too big, the 16 was uh, almost a little bit too little. So for the pattern download, they have zero to 16 which is a waist of 25 up to a waist of 36 and a hip of 35 up to a waist uh, hip of 46. Then they have the next size block, which is 18 to 26. And that size range has a waist of 39 with a hip of 50 up to a waist of 47 inches and hips of 58 inches. My waist is 37, 37 and a half, and my hips are about 47, 48. So you can see I'm right in the middle of that 16, 18 range. And when I held, I ended up printing off both of the size, um, both files for the zero to 16 and then 18 to 26. I was a little bit irritated that I taped them all together. I cut out the 16 pattern and held it up to the 18 and there was a good two and a half inches of difference in the length of the crotch. Um, in the back, there was, there just seemed like there was a lot of difference in between those sizes. So, Long story short, I decided to go with a 16. I shortened the crotch length because I always, almost always have to do that. And then I lengthened the back crotch length. Now you may think, you know, six one way, half dozen the other, but the reality is the front of my from my waist down to the center seam, inseam, is shorter than what was on the pattern. And usually what happens is they end up being, the crotch ends up being too low. Um, even with, you know, the back crotch, um, even if I don't shorten that. So what I did was I took another pair of shorts that I already owned and I kind of used that as a pattern. At least I held it up to the um, seamwork pattern to see if there, how much difference there was. And there was about a, at least an inch to an inch and a half difference. I wanted to account for ease. So I think I shortened it by an inch. And then the back crotch length was too short. So I lengthened that by an inch anyway. I wanted to make a wearable toile, so I had this denim. Actually, I had some other denim and I decide on this ultimately. It's a kind of a dark blue, lightweight, not super lightweight, and I don't think it has much stretch in it. But I had this in my stash and I decided to use it and I um, cut out the pieces 
and um, just stitched the the box stitched the front and the backs together I did put in a um, a little placket zipper rather than put the whole fly in because I, I didn't want to have to if it needed to be altered I didn't want to have to take that out again and um, I think they'll fit great so um, then I had to deconstruct them and um, and now I'm I'm cutting the rest of them out and I'll sew them up to be able to wear them regularly. Um, it does suggest that you use some uh, different kind of lining for the, the pockets and I have chosen this cute little quilting cotton which I had in my stash. This is called Llama Llama by Llama Llama Bobama by Sue Marsh. Sorry. Anyway. I don't think they, uh, I think it's out of print. And what else? Uh, finally, um, I didn't tell you what I'm wearing. I am wearing my black uh, fabricstore.com. I forget what they're called, wide leg pants. And um, I'll put a picture of me wearing them. I made these for So Frugal 22 and I had made a black and white check gingham top to go with it and it was kind of a seersucker fabric and just didn't feel very comfortable on my skin plus it was it was really boxy so I decided I liked the gingham and I thought I'm just gonna get some regular black and white gingham check so I got this from Hobby Lobby and I believe it's yarn dyed. Yeah, it's a pretty lightweight, but um, I found this pattern, Butterick 5988, and I like this view here, view A. I might make it sleeveless. It's got some tucks in it, which is similar to how I did my top for So Frugal 22, but I think this will look better. So I may, hopefully we'll get this made um, maybe before vacation, I don't know. Last but not least, um, we have a prompt every, for all our Friday Sews vloggers and this weekend is Memorial Day weekend. And I just want to um, say thanks, <laughs> which isn't nearly enough. Pay honor and tribute to our um, the men and women in our armed forces. Um, they fought hard for our country and our freedom. And um, Memorial Day is just a great way to pay tribute and show support. Um, the prompt asks if we have made anything for Memorial Day and um, I have not made anything, but um, I do believe we will keep our American flag out and show our support for all um, the people who have fought for our country. So that's it for me today. I really appreciate you watching again. And I hope you've enjoyed this video. Um, if you did, please give it a thumbs up and um, consider subscribing and hitting that notification bell so you can see when I upload new videos. Also, to those of you who have already subscribed, I appreciate you um, watching and um, coming with me and my uh, sewing experience. And I um, uh, hope you'll stay, stay with me. So that's it for me today. I really appreciate you watching again. Thanks so much. Go so beautiful. Bye-bye.